So here's the last video for this week. Let's sort of do what we did last week, uh, last uh, last meeting. Last time you learned that circles of evaluation aren't just for math statements, but can be used for uh, more than just numbers. So we saw how the um, the function star could be used with these arguments to draw a star, and how this circle of evaluation actually helps you write the code for that. You also learned that data can have types. And we talked about three different types. Number, which you already knew. String, which you knew. And then also, image is a type that Racket recognizes. We also talked a little bit about contracts, which programmers use to talk about function. A contract has three parts. The name of the function, the domain, and the range. The domain is the data that the function expects to take in. The range is the um, type of data that the function produces. So today we'll keep talking, we'll talk more about contracts um, and also some use some new functions that will help with your game. So here's the contract for a new function. What's the name of this function? So let's look and see. Name, remember, comes right after the semicolon. And I don't know if I said this before, but remember in Python, we use the pound sign, you know, that shift three as the comment. Um, racket language uses semicolon. So semicolon is not used in the language. It's used as a, as a comment character. So we'll use that at the beginning of our um, contracts. So rectangle is the name of the function. It looks like it takes in one, two, three, four arguments, and there are a number a number, a string, and a string, and all together those produce an image. So rectangle produces an image. So the domain is the number, number, string, string, and the range is an image. So the contract tells exactly how to use the function, and by writing its name and then using values for the arguments in the domain, we actually can, can use the function. So here is that rectangle function, that's the name, a number and a number, so there's 150, two numbers, and two strings, solid and blue. So what do you think that function is going to look like? I'm not sure, no, it won't let me patch that up, thanks, so I'll just type it. Rectangle, and then the contract said number, number. And it said string, string, but I forgot what they were. Solid and blue. String. And blue. So what do you think that'll produce? I think probably a blue rectangle. Let's see if it's longer or wider than the 150. So, 100 was how wide it is this way. And 50 must be how tall it is this way. So here's um, good. We did that. So by writing down the contracts for our function, we can see, look back, and see how they are used. So we we don't have to look up a, in the documentation a big explanation of the function. Once we've used it and understood it, just the contract will remind us exactly how it's used. So here's the contract for the plus function. It takes in two numbers, so a number and a number, and it gives back a number, produces a number. So the range is number, number, I'm sorry, I used that wrong. The domain is number, number, and the range is a number. So why don't you pause the video, and in your video notebook for today, write the contract, so this whole line, the whole line, the contract for um, multiplication, subtraction, division, and square root. And if you don't know exactly what square root is, then just guess at what the contract's going to be, and then we can talk about it later. Okay, pause the video. Okay. So now that you know how to use a contract to write an expression, here are contracts for several new functions that all produce images. See if you can figure out uh, how to use these functions to draw other shapes. So go ahead and uh, pause the video, and I'll leave it right here. So pause it, 
and um, type in this function here. And then, based on that, see if you can um, make a triangle and a circle. So practice with this ellipse, and then also make some triangles and circles. And then also um, practice doing different uh, fills and different colors and different sizes for ellipses, triangles, and circles. And then um, it, it, I will ask you, so, so after your, your class today, make sure you tell me, see if you can figure out what the difference is between an ellipse and a circle, and we can talk about it. So pause now and do that. Okay. So here's an expression that uses a very interesting function. So this function takes in the URL of an image you find online and will produce that image that you can use in your program. So go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and type in this function into Dr. Racket so you can see what it does. And then come back here and then in your video notebook answer these questions. So what are the three parts of a contract? So that's just a reminder of what the three parts are. And then, what's the name of this function? What is, uh, how many things are in the domain? What is the domain? And what will the expression evaluate to? So what's the range? So um, pause now and answer. Uh, after you play with, the, play with this, give it a try. Then go to your video notebook and answer these questions. Okay, so contracts help programmers write code. Um, so it's always a good idea to write down contracts for future use. Can you figure out what the contract for a can you figure out the contract for a function just by looking at some sample code? Uh, and I think we probably can. So let's look at this function, which is called text. And um, so in your video notebook, write down the name, domain, and range for this text function. So pause and do that. Okay. Uh, so make sure you don't confuse the contract for a function. So let's look at these examples below and look at which is which. So this line starts with a comment and it doesn't have any parentheses. So I'm guessing it's a contract. And when I look at it, yep, here's the name, here's the domain, and here's the range of the function. All right, and then the next line, okay, that's clearly not a contract, that is code. It starts with a parentheses, it's got a um, function name, it's got several arguments and closed parentheses, so that's a, a racket expression. Same thing for the next line. It's clearly a racket expression and not a contract. But the last line is a contract. It's got a function name, the domain, and the range, and it starts with a semicolon, so it's a contract. So sometimes we make mistakes when we write code, um, and we've talked about that before, um, and we use a value that violates the contract. Fortunately, the computer identifies when this happens and gives an error message that lets you correct it. So for each one of these guys down here, um, try to predict, guess, as to what the um, error message is going to be. There's something wrong with the contract for each of these. So see if you can guess what the error message is, and then um, type in. Go ahead into Dr. Racket and type in each of those functions and look at the error message and see if you guessed right and see if the error message makes sense um, with what you think should happen on these. So pause the video now and type in each one of these um, and look at the error message. Okay. So you know, like you know, being an, an expert at reading error messages is an important part of being a good programmer, just like being a good gamer. Learning how to die, how, what different types of ways you can die, what's dangerous, all that is a great way to learn, and it's the same thing when you're programming. You have to learn how to, to read the error messages and understand what was wrong. So now, here are some other new image producing functions. So, how, get, you can guess how they work. So this is this is a lot like you play games. So we're, they're, they're not going to tell us any more about these functions, except that their name. 
rhombus, right dash triangle, radial dash star, star dash polygon. Once you go to Dr. Racket, so pause the video, go to Dr. Racket, type in these, and see if you can figure out, based on um, your knowledge of these shapes and the error messages you get, as to what the right um, domain is, the right contract is for these um, for these four functions, um, and see if you can figure out how to actually make these four functions. And then when you figure it out, um, type those lines, the, the, the full, or you can, you can copy and paste or, or type in your video notebook um, the code that you came up with to make a rhombus and a right triangle, a radial star, and a star polygon. So pause now and see if you can figure those out using Dr. Record. Okay. There are also functions that take um, in images as input. So when the, 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 the ones you just played with all produced images as output, but there are also functions that take images as input. Um, so like this one, flip horizontal. So think about what the word horizontal, horizontal means. And you can think, um, it, so it has an image both of its domain and its image. So let's actually look at that. So inside, so it takes an image in and produces an image. So here's flip horizontal, here's the code. And here's the image. It's going to be in this inside part of this circle evaluation. So first, I'm going to write the inside part. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to say text. So that's the name of the function. Backwards 50 what? Red. Backwards. So that's going to, let's see what these are. So the, the contract for this function is the name is text, and it takes in a string, a number, and a string. Let's see what we get back. We get back an image. So it looks like this first string is whatever text we want to, to write. This number is going to be how, how big it is, and red is obviously its color. So there's the image. And now we want to see what the function flip horizontal horizontal does. All right, so I want to make my image again. Text backwards. Oops. 50. Red. Well, huh, it says, so, all right, see if we can find out what I did wrong. Text backwards, 50 red. Well, that's the example it gave us. Let's see what flip horizontal, let's, all right, let's make a, let's do this. See if we did something else wrong. So that is saying that it can't do text ones, um, even though they gave that one as an example. So let's do something simpler like a circle. Flip horizontal. All right, and now let's make a circle. I believe a circle is circle and a size and um, whether it's filled or not, and a color. I um, don't remember the words, but let's see. I think if I click just on circle and hit F1 on my computer, so that right above the one is F1, that will open up the help inside the manual for Dr. Racket. All right, so now let's go and see what the circle says. Circle. R, M, and C. So it takes a mode. There's a string for the mode. And let's see what mode is. Solid, outline, solid. Okay, I couldn't remember what they were called. All right, 
So mode is solid. All right. Uh, well, that's not a very good for flipping, though. Huh? Is it? Let's copy and do this right. Yeah, flipping a circle doesn't. just gives you a circle. So let's flip this rectangle. That didn't really tell us much either, did it? But I bet if there's a flip horizontal, there's probably a flip vertical. Let's try that. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. I bet that spelled wrong. Let's try again. Yeah, vertical is spelled wrong. All right. Now let's see if we can do that. Oh, well, that didn't do this. I guess flipping, so flipping this vertical didn't do either. I thought it was going to rotate it, but that's called rotation, not flipping. So, um,. Let's find an image that we can flip. Let's go back in our slides, find that function that you probably already did, which was to get this icon. Bitmap URL, so I'm going to type that in. If it'll copy and paste this or not, let's see. No. Push up world images icon. Okay. HTTP. Oh, there's supposed to be a stream. HTTP. Colon slash slash. Images icon back in. All right, so let's see if that's good. So there's an image. Now let's flip it vertical. So that should make our boot upside down, right? All right, so flip vertical takes an image, and we know that this, this function took an image, so let's try it. Yay! Okay, so it flipped our boot upside down. Where were we? Okay, so here's flip vertical. Yeah, so uh, that was Im interesting that uh, flip vertical... Yeah, that flip horizontal, um, this example didn't work. So you can try this, but, but it told me that it couldn't do text. Um, so go ahead and try these. Flip vertical, scale, and rotate. And um, don't be surprised if flip vertical doesn't work. So, so let me know what error message you get. Um, but go ahead and also try um, scale and rotate. So pause the video now and do that. Okay, so in this lesson, um, you expanded what you knew about circles of evaluation. So that's not just for um, numbers, but it's also for other types of functions, and um, including strings and images. You learned um, that everything you knew about functions on numbers also works on strings and images. So this will definitely make your programs more interesting. And you also learned how to use the image functions to create your own images um, and how to use existing images from the internet in your program through bitmap slash URL. So in the next unit, next week, we'll learn to create our own functions. So, you know, right now we've just been typing everything in. We've not defined our own. So next week we'll learn how to define our own functions uh, to save our work while we're writing expressions. Um, and we'll also start customizing your game with images uh, for elements in your game design. So we've got some background now in the language we're going to use, so we'll be able to go back and start applying that to your game design next week.